God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. How you doing? This is Apostle Robert Jenkins. It's a Monday, 12 noon. Happy weekend or beginning of the week. How's everybody doing? God bless you. Welcome to Divine Insight Ministries. If this is your first time, we're out of New Orleans. And as always, me and my wife like to take out the time to say thank you. We appreciate all that you do and how you support this ministry. So God bless everybody. Good to see you, son. Hope everybody had a great weekend. I know it's been very taxing. Uh, people who've been staying home is starting to get to me a little bit, but we're working it out. Good to see you, Sister Owens. Good to see you, Brother James. Good to see you. What's going on, Mark? I'll call you this week, man. God bless everybody. Sister Willis, God bless you. Sister Karen, God bless you. God bless you. So welcome, everybody. Go ahead, hit that share button. It is so important and it means so much to me and my wife that you hit that share button. Share this on your page, okay? A lot of times we'll look at your posts, we'll go through your page, and it's just, it, it does our hearts well when we look at your page and we see that not only do you support us by watching, but you support us by sharing. So please, yeah, this is part five, Brother James. So please support us by hitting that share button, share this on your page, and you can invite as many people out. Hit that invite button. Let people know. There are so many people that can be blessed by what you're being blessed by, okay? So don't be selfish in that in that aspect of it. Just go ahead and share it. And also do a watch party. A watch party is a great inspiration for people, and it's a great boost for us uh, to be able to reach more people. It really helps us the way fa Facebook got, set, got it set up that when you do a watch party, it helps us improve the numbers and reach a greater audience. And also hit those thumbs and those hearts. Every time you do that, that also gives uh, Facebook an indication of how well people are responding to the message. And so we thank you for that. Good to see you, Sister Sadler. God bless everybody. And so let's get ready to go into part five today, how to understand and transform uh, the enemies of divine connection. Anytime you're divinely connected to someone, there are gonna be challenges and difficulties that you're going to have to deal with. And so I'm trying to give a practical understanding and a practical solution of how to do that so that you won't lose a connection. There are people that are important to you, people that are important to us, and we have to know how to stay connected. Okay, so that's very important. Uh, how to do it, how to remain in the place that God has kept you in. Any place that you are in, you will be attacked just because you're connected to that place. Because you're a threat to darkness, okay? But when you know how to handle it, you don't lose the connection. And that's what's important. So I'm praying for everybody. We know this is a very taxing time on us. A lot of us are not without a job. We all, me and my wife are not working right now. But God is sustaining us. We thank you for all that you do and how you sow. And that helps us to be able to sustain. And not only that, it helps the ministry to be a blessing to many other people that may be in the same uh, predicament that we are in. And because you're able to give, we're able to be a blessing to them. Good to see you, mama. Good to see everybody. So God bless you. God bless you. Hit that share button. Let's walk into it. I got a lot to uh, share with you today. Good to see you, Sister Nick Journey. Been missing you. I know you've been working. And so we're working on the masses. She's been really doing a great job with those masses. And so we thank God for it. But uh, God bless you, and let's walk into it. Father, we bless you for the wisdom. God, you know we can't do anything without you. But first, we tell you thank. Before we ask anything from you, we first give you our love and our respect by saying that we love you, that we honor you. We thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness and how well you have been faithful. Not only are you the God of the universe, but you're the God of our soul. We thank you for the relationship of a father and son, that you didn't separate us from creations. Trees don't know you as fathers. The grass don't know you as a father. The sun and the moon don't know you as a father. They only know you as a creator. But we know you as a father. Thank you for the relationship that you allow us, the creation, to have a relationship with the creator. So we thank you, Lord, for that. Touch your people today. Many of those that are listening today, they are in a need of a word. Don't let us be so limited to what you have given us, but let us be sensitive to the Holy Spirit that if you drift us away or move us away to something that is paralyzing the people. Give us a word for that issue. Give us a word for that time. God, we crucify ourselves so that we can hear you. And so we thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. Holy Spirit, we're listening. Wisdom, give us the wisdom that we need today to reach God's people, to reach their mind, their soul, so they'll be free from all yokes and bondages. God, heal the brokenhearted, set the captives free, open up the eyes of the blind, give us power to lay hands on the sick as you did, to raise the dead, and God, we thank you, Lord, for all that we are able to do, cast out un unclean spirits, heal all manner of sicknesses and diseases. And we just love you. Thank you, Lord, that there's an increase of love, an increase of wisdom, an increase of understanding. 
And we thank you, Lord, that you're calling our sons and daughters back into a divine place. And we love you for it. So thank you, Lord Jesus. Have your way. Let the word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We know that no one before the gifts us shall prosper. And you sent your word and it healed them. Let the word be released today out of our mouth and that it will bring healing to the souls that hear it. Give us ears to hear. And God, we bless you. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. We thank you, Lord. Amen. So God bless you. Hit that share button. Share this on your page. Let's move into some very practical teaching today. Good to see you, Sister Brown. God bless you. Really enjoy uh, the video you put up. Singing it was tremendous, and we thank God for you. We're going to support you in any way that we can. And so God bless you. Let's move today in how to understand and transform the enemies of divine connection. If you have not went back and watched the previous videos, we have four before this. This is session five. Please go back. Brother John Holmes, love you, man. I'm going to call you, see how you're doing. Uh... Please go back and watch the other four. I'm loading them up on the on YouTube now. I didn't get a chance to over the weekend. So I think uh, session one, two, and one, three, and four is up. I got to put session two up. And so you can go back on YouTube and watch those videos as well. Please visit our YouTube page. It's so important. We're trying to do something with the YouTube page, and we need you to just bum rush that page, watch those videos over and over again, get our numbers up, hit the notification button. Please visit our Facebook page, personal page, and Divine Insight Ministries Facebook page as well. Hit that notification. Let us know that you're there. Leave some comments. We also have a website. Visit our website. Just please support us in any way that you can, and we are definitely appreciative of that, okay? We love you and we thank you for all that you do. Uh, point number one, when you're dealing with divine connections, I want you to understand that God will send you people. When you are connected to people, one of the reasons for the connections is to understand things of the kingdom. So point number one, God is sending people who are in search of an understanding of kingdom, okay? God is sending people who is in search of an understanding of things of the kingdom or kingdom things, okay? And so that's the key thing. At the end of the day, our relationship has to be bigger than you are my brother, you are my sister, uh, you're my father, you're my mother. But what is the kingdom saying to me? Why are we connected? We must understand the kingdom agenda. Many times marriages don't move uh, into greater levels because they never move into the, the kingdom agenda for the marriage. What is the kingdom agenda for for the friendship? What is the kingdom agenda for the brotherhood? And so point number one, when God connects you to people, you must understand the kingdom agenda. This will have everything to do with how healthy, good to see you, Demetrius. God bless you, man. Tremendous job, you and uh, Brother Reno, man. We're so proud of you and thank God for how God is using you, how God is using you in that city. So I pray for anointing on your life, you and your wife life, as your marriage increase, as the ministry increase, in your life and in that city, I believe you're gonna. I believe God is gonna move you globally too, as well, and and begin to affect uh, the kingdom of God uh, through politics. I, I really believe that through politics that you're gonna become a voice for the kingdom, and so really, really, uh, God doing great things with you. Thank God for you. And so it's very important that you understand kingdom agenda. A lot of times relationships are not healthy because you didn't go no farther than 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 brotherhood. So what happens is. Uh, uh, that y'all friendship is only talking about certain things. And so you never get into what's the purpose of this. And so you may call a certain brother that you're connected to once a week, twice a week, but what's the kingdom agenda for y'all, for y'all divine assignment? What's the kingdom agenda for the connection? Is it just just for you to share some things with me? Are we only to go to certain places? Same thing, uh, brother to sister, sister to sister. You have to understand that. If not, if you don't, if you don't understand that you are connected to that person <clears throat> for a kingdom agenda, what happens is it'll start spiritual and it'll end up carnal. If you don't move into kingdom agenda, anything that you are part of, whether it's a church, whether it's a ministry, good to see you, Sister Tia, God bless you and your husband. Anything that you are part of that God divinely connected to, if you don't move into the kingdom agenda, of the, of the connection, whether that's a church, whether that's a marriage, whether that's a brotherhood, whether that's a sisterhood, if you don't do that, you'll move into carnality. And so you may start off spiritual and you'll end up carnal, okay? Or you'll end up in the flesh. This is why a lot of times God will place you with certain people in a certain organization and it started out well and then it got ugly. And, and if you had that in your life two or three times, it become frustrating. You become fearful to have a new beginning with certain people 
people or have a new beginning with anybody because it ends up ugly. But a lot of times it ends up ugly because y'all didn't shift. You got to keep shifting. And you got to shift based upon the kingdom agenda. Okay, I thank God for you. You have been a blessing to me. I have been a blessing to you. What's the kingdom agenda for this relationship? What's the kingdom agenda for this friendship? What is the kingdom agenda for this marriage? And so you'll, you'll make your peak if you don't run into kingdom agenda. So thank you for sharing. God bless you. Thank you for that. We're sowing where we're going. So it's so important that you understand that God is sending you people, but they are in search of kingdom agenda. A lot of people don't even know that that's what their search is. I'm trying to find out what is my ultimate purpose in life. I'm trying to find out my ultimate uh, identity. Who am I? Because sometimes you put on many faces, but who am I really? And the whole purpose of the of this divine connection was to bring about kingdom agenda in your life. Me and my wife, we met based upon kingdom agenda. Okay. She got in touch with me. I don't I don't know how she got in touch with me. Uh, I know it was through Facebook, but I don't know how we met. But the first conversation was based upon kingdom agenda. And so God is sending you people that are in search of kingdom agenda. Their spirit is longing for this level of understanding, this level of purpose. And you must know that. If not, you'll run into carnality as the as a relationship keeps going. And what happens is you'll start to put expectations on the friendship that are really not healthy for the relationship. So you'll start making things like you don't call me every week. Well, the truth of the matter is, I don't know why, why, why do I have to keep calling you? What are we doing together? What is really going on? What's the purpose of this? Okay. After we talk about the kids, we talk about our jobs. We talk about finances. We talk about president Donald Trump. We talk about the Corona. Then what else in our, is our conversation? And if it's not based upon kingdom agenda, it goes down this while. And then what happens is you'll find yourself arguing about things that really is not the problem. The problem is kingdom agenda is not in place. You'll find yourself bored. You'll find yourself frustrated because kingdom agenda, like right now, this Corona thing that got most of us shut in, you should be faced with what is kingdom agenda for my life? What is kingdom agenda? Okay. Very key. That's right. That's right. That's right. Sister Tia. A lot of times you'll build a relationship off of brokenness. And when you get healed, you have nothing in common. Okay. And so you have to examine that because you have to examine all divine connections. And where are we going with this? What, what are we doing together? What is the objective? What is the goal? And that's very key. Okay. In life period. So that's point number one. Point number two, People want to know when you're connected to people, people want to know how to walk in the spirit. Whenever you're dealing with a divine connection, good to see you, Pastor Tim, it's dealing with how I want to be able to fulfill uh, what God has called me to be. I don't want to be an average Christian. I don't want to be an average pastor. I don't want to be an average leader. God was pushing on who you are in God. And so people are coming to you for divine connection so you can show them how to walk this walk. Watch this. From a spiritual place, okay? I want to know how. Me, Robert James Duvall Jenkins, I've always been attracted to things of the spirit, always. And so if I meet certain people, if I hear certain people's messages, I'm attracted to the spiritual side of who you are because I want to know how to do that because there's a call in my life. There's a call in my life that how do I do what God called me to do? When I was a little boy, I always knew that God was bigger than the organization. He's bigger than church. So really, is it possible to take two fish and five loaves of bread and feed 5,000? I want to know that. And so in this divine connection, do you have something from God that you can reveal to me that caused me to walk in the spirit at a greater level? I don't want to be saved, but always bound to lust. I don't want to be saved, but I just can't get past this drinking or this smoking or this anger or this depression. I don't want to find a roof in my life. I don't want to be saved and sad, called and confused. That may be a part of the journey, but I want to know how to come out of that journey. Good to see you, Brother Dave Hamilton to man love you. And so it's so important that in a divine connection, you got to connect to people and understand the divine connection. You ought to help me walk in the spirit. Don't help me learn how to hide. Don't be a hiding person from me. Don't let, don't let your life become a fig leaf in which I cover my nakedness and my shame, but I'm really not delivered. 
I need to know that you can show me how to really walk in the chambers of God, how to really touch God, how to really get close to God, how to become who I'm called to become to the point that there is some strongholds in my life that they are no longer a part of my life. I have learned how to walk in the spirit to the point because I'm connected to you that I pray at a greater level. I study at a greater level. I fast at a greater level. My level of consecration and concentration is at a greater level because of this divine connection. You have revealed to me how to really walk in the spirit. When I was a young boy, that was one of my questions. How do you walk in the spirit? It sounds good, but how do you do it? And I remember asking my mother, walk naturally, mom, then stop and then walk in the spirit because I don't know what that looks like. And there's a lot of church language that we say, but we have never saw it. What does it look like? Show me what it looks like to walk in the spirit. You are connected to a person. Watch this. You are connected to a person to show them how to walk in the spirit, to show Show them how to overcome those strongholds, those private hidden failures in their lives. They are connected to you so I can show you how to walk in the spirit. Not only walk in the spirit, spirit, but stay in the spirit to the point that it affects your life, that you are a better husband because of this divine connection. You are a better brother, a better sister. You don't want to be connected to people or, or you don't want to believe that divine connection does not influence your walk. Every divine connection should influence your level of walking with God. And walking just means to agree. So how can, two, how can two walk together unless they agree? So to walk in the spirit really means to agree with the move of the spirit. Do you have a greater level of agreeing with God? Uh, do, have your wrestling, have, has, it, has it toned down to the point that it's almost at not? Because you have learned through your divine connections how to really yield to God, how to grow in faith, okay? This is so interesting important, okay? So point number two, people want to know how to walk in the spirit. And so when they connect it to you, whether they talk about everything else but God, that's really not why they're there. They are there to learn how to walk in a greater level in agreement with God. And you don't want to be connected to people and only keep it at a carnal level when it was a divine connection. This is, has a divine purpose. It has a kingdom agenda tied to it. And do not waste time. Don't be on the phone two hours, but only five minutes of it was, was given to God. Don't be on the phone three hours or, or be in their face or go out to dinner or go to the movies or do everything else, but but you haven't helped them walk in the spirit. God gonna When we get to heaven, God is going to say, you know what? I put you in people's lives, but do you know you waste most of the time talking about things that kept them stuck versus the things that kept them elevated? See what I'm saying? And so this very key, Okay, so the question would be, how do you walk in the spirit? Walk the spirit, the word spirit really means, watch this, it really means the hard drive of God or the mind of God. Okay, it is God's will and God's purpose for your life. The word walks really means to agree. So when you say walk in the spirit, you means to agree with God's purpose. The more you study God's, the Bible, the more you study the word of God and you start to see what God intent is for your life, the more you do that, it is revealed. And what you do is you agree. And so when you agree, agree with what God is saying, you're walking. It's almost like if I'm talking to you right now and you say, oh, I agree with that. I feel it in my spirit. You say, man, I'm with, I'm with you. You know what I'll be saying? You're walking with me now. A lot of times when a person talks, they'll say, don't say that right now. Just walk with me. What they say is just listen and take heed to it. So to walk in the spirit is to take heed to what God is saying. Those who have ears, let them hear what the spirit is saying. Okay, a right now revelation of God, a fresh understanding. You'll feel your baby kick when you know that it's the right thing. You're hearing the right thing. All of a sudden, it's almost like your sails come alive. And then you walk with that. You make that agreement with that. That's walking with that. That's the whole purpose of a divine connection, that you are better because you met a sister Donnie. You are better because you met... Uh, Brother Tremaine, because you met certain people in your life, you know how to walk in the spirit. You know more about your purpose and you know more about uh, your identity and you're walking in that. You're walking in love. You're walking in light. You're walking in the spirit of humility. You're not arrogant as you used to because of this connection. You're not self-centered like you used to because you learned from this connection how to walk in the spirit, to walk out of the flesh and walk in the spirit of God, the, the, the will of God the ways of God, the word of God to walk in that. That's point number two. So you have to understand that's the purpose of that divine connection. And for many of you, you are the person that's going to help them. That's why you, when you have real friendship, how often do y'all pray? 
Well, just look at the friends you may have. Say you got two or three friends that you usually talk to once a week. How often do y'all pray over the phone? How often do y'all discuss things that, that would, before y'all get off the phone, you say, you know what? I'm walking a better walk now since I've been with you. Thank you for that. Because that's the purpose. Don't waste the oil on things that are carnal. Do not, do not use the spirit of God as occasion or your freedom as an occasion for the flesh. Okay? Thank you for that, Sister Brown. So that's so important. Okay? Point number three. When you're dealing with divine connections, there are going to be things that show up in that relationship. Whether it's spiritually or naturally, there are going to be things, watch this. There are going to be things that show up in that relationship. What are the things that show up in a divine relationship? Okay, a divine connection. Just because God put it together don't mean it don't come with problems. It comes with challenges. Yes, it does. And, and that's the, you're called to do that. God will never raise you up as an answer unless the problem is already here. Okay, or he'll never raise you up as the answer if the problem is not on his way. And so that's very key. Point number three. Past injuries can become enemies of divine connection. So you have to know how to deal with people that God has connected you to, but they have past injuries. And those past injuries sometimes uh, hinder them from knowing how to communicate at the level of the connection of the, or the level that the connection is needed. Like there's a certain level. It, 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 there's a book out years ago that this written. It's a pretty good book. I like most majority of it. Thank you for sewing. Thank you for sewing. Thank you for sewing. And so there's a book called the love languages and it's really written for relationships to understand each person's love language where there are spiritual languages too at different levels. And so a lot of times you are divinely connected to that person, but y'all are bad at it, even though you believe this is a divine connection because of the language. You speak two different languages. And so a lot of times past injuries hinder the person to be able to articulate or to be able to express the level that is really designed to help you or for you to help them. But because of past injuries, they don't know how. Like a lot of times, pain speaks for you. That's what I'm really saying. Pain speaks for you. So in, in, in connections, you have to know how to recognize this is the right person. But because of their past injuries, they don't have the right language yet. Many times in my life, God has connected me to people. And they would say things to me that if I didn't understand the divine connection, I would pull away from it. Because they would say things that were very hurting. They would say things that were very, it's almost like I, I can see the devil get in them or in their mindset to try to hurt me through them, but they not, they not even aware that the devil is using them. This happens. There's a lot of whispering a lot of times that people talk about you behind your back, but they are really divinely connected to you, but their past injuries doesn't allow them to know how to be in a healthy relationship. Oh, thank you, baby. <laughs> I don't know what that's from. So thank you for that. And so that's very key that you have to know how to be able to recognize that just because, that's right, hurt people hurt people, just because their language is not right doesn't mean we're not connected. This is a very key thing. When God connects you to people, they're going to have past injuries that hinder their level of communication, that hinder their level of eyesight, they're hindered a level of sensitivity. A lot of times you're connected to people, but their pain has numbed them. And so as much as you're trying to give them, it would feel like that they're not getting what you're giving because they have become numb. Okay? And so it's very key that you understand past injuries. Okay? Past injury. Things that happen in my life. So many things that happened when I met my wife. We had to talk about those things. And I thank God that my wife saw me before she met me. So she already knew who I was supposed to be in her life and, and who I was supposed to be in God. So that my past hurts or my past injuries and the language that I have did not make her leave me or make her afraid. Sometimes you have met your wife, you have met your husband, but their language because of past injuries made you think that's not the right person because they wasn't saying the right things. Okay, like when I first met my wife, my past injury, this was my language about the church. I used to always say the church has raped me. And any time we would talk about church, my intensity of my pain would increase in the conversation. So I would seem hostile. I would seem defensive. And even though we are divinely connected, 
Watch this. My injuries made me, made me respond a certain way. And so when you're dealing with divine connections, you have to recognize the language that comes from uh, the level that they've been on or the experiences, sometimes everything to do with their language or their emotions or their temperament, okay? As the book talks about lang love languages, there's different temperaments. And so you have to recognize that so that you don't pull away. A lot of times, parents pull away from their sons because the language that their son says to their mother seem to be disrespectful. Thank you for sewing. We're sewing where we're going. And so, and so they seem to be disrespectful, but that's the injury talking. That's the injury talking. That's the pain talking. That's the offense talking. And you got to know that you are connected to them. Watch this. You're connected to them to help them. Don't identify their injuries and don't help them get, get help, help them get healed. You've been qualified and trained. That's why God connected you. Because you know, you first of all, you got to be honest. You should know how they're, why they saying what they saying. Because you was hurt. Church hurt you. Church rejected you. And so you understand a lot of the pain that comes out of their language because you was a victim yourself. Why do you think God picked you? Because you know what it is to be lied on. You know what it is to be talked about. You know what it is to be misunderstood. You know what it is to be uh, overlooked. You know what it is to, to for people seem to not comprehend you. You know what it is to be strange in other people's eyes. And so a lot of times the connection is hard and there are people who have such powerful gifts. They have such wisdom but we but most people can't connect to them because i can't get past the language of your injury i can't get past your attitude of your injury i can't get past of your disposition about yourself because you're so bitter as i think about you're so angry uh you're so you're so uh despiteful but this is real hurt this is real pain this is real rejection and so you must understand this is only enemy in the in, in pain and the devil is hoping that the people respond to your pain and they don't want to tolerate you. They don't want to put up with you. Uh, they, they don't want to have the love that endures all things and suffers all things. And so many times we miss out on great people. Most of the time, when a, usually when a woman finds a great man, you better believe he already been through a whole bunch of women. And it, it's a sad thing when you raise a man up to be somebody else's husband because you couldn't you couldn't stay away around long enough. You didn't have enough love. Watch this. You didn't have enough discernment to know that that if you help this person get healed, what an awesome man you would have. What an awesome woman you would have. But many times, you, 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 you raise him up for somebody else. You raise her up for somebody else because we don't know how in divine connections to deal with language that comes from our hurt, but not from who we really are, okay? Okay, and so past injuries, things that happen to you, people who've been molested, they have a certain way how they deal, they have a certain sensitivity. And so when you've been molested, uh, uh, a man may feel like, you know what, she won't let me touch her. I can't, uh, she never lets me in. I don't care how much we talk. I know that I'm not all, she's not all the way comfortable with me. She's not all the way, she don't feel safe yet. What I got to do to make her feel safe? And so this is real talk because you're trying to connect to your husband. You're trying to connect to your wife. But the past injuries will make you back up. It'll cause you to be an introvert. And so you have to be wise. One who wins souls is wise. And so your son needs you, but can you endure his language? Your daughter needs you, but can you endure her language? Your mother needs you. Your father needs you. But can you endure their language from the past injuries? See, very key. Okay, and you have to be very cunning and have wisdom so that you won't lose a connection because most people who've been hurt, they carry so much medicine. And if you pull away from them, you just pull away from your cure. You just pull away from your level of advancement. You just pull away from what you need from them. The devil hides greatness in pain, greatness in prison. And so that's why you can't give up on your son. You can't give up on your daughter. You can't give up on your husband, on your wife. You have to recognize that their language is only there because of the injury. A hurt dog will bark. Real talk. A hurt dog will bark. Okay? Uh, and so that's very key. Okay? If you're not dealing with past injuries, point number four, you deal with present suspicions. Okay. Now we're talking about things that makes it difficult to connect. When you are divinely connected to people, there are going to be enemies that's going to show up. 
Okay, I wish I could do me and my wife, and I know we go, we do it on wishes, but I, I'm hoping that God allow us to do it across the world. Because I really believe I can help a lot of marriages by just the wisdom that we have learned together, me and my wife, to help you with how to recognize certain things. Okay? And just because a person may have a problem, don't mean he's not the one, she's not the one. Okay? Very key. But if if you're not dealing with past injuries that sometimes make connections difficult, sometimes present, point number four, present uh, suspicions. Sometimes what people been through, they don't trust anything in the right now. They have suspicions about everything. So you may tell a young lady that you're dating or your wife. I will always love you. She's looking at you. Yeah, the last man said that. Always have present suspicions. I don't care. And so you're trying to wonder, do she really trust me? But you can feel the vibration of suspicion. And so if you come a couple minutes late, it intensifies itself because she always has present uh, suspicion. She always, she always suspect, well, he, uh, is he cheating? Is she cheating? Or is he lying? Is that the truth? Is he trying to con me? Present suspicions. Real talk when you've been wounded. And a lot of times these present suspicions, you know that it's close, but you don't hear the click in the lock. We're, we're close, but... She really hasn't clicked yet. You know, when you put the lock in, you hear that click, you know that it's locked. Well, sometimes you don't feel like you and your son is really locked. You really haven't locked at the church. You at the church, you're doing things, but you don't feel that click yet because you can sense the present suspicion. A lot of times in ministry, it's very common that the pastor don't believe nobody going to be faithful. Uh, he going to lead me too. She going to lead me too. And they'll tell you that. You going to leave me like the last members left me? Present suspicions. You've been hurt. You've been hurt, apostle. You've been hurt, prophet. You've been hurt, evangelist. And what happens is you won't really connect to who God sent you as a team. You never let people really do what they called to do. You really don't release them with full authority to be themselves because you got present suspicion. Because you just, you're waiting for something to happen. You really don't believe that it's going to go, but so it's going to, after a while, it's going to show itself. You got present suspicion. Even in friendship, God has sent you a real brother, but you're just looking at him. Yeah, yeah, he seemed to be faithful, but I got present suspicion. Okay? And this makes it hard sometimes to make that last little click. That last little click. Should I join this church? Oh, I got present suspicions. Uh, should I really lock? It's why a lot of times a man won't marry you. But, but they you five years. But his wounds make him have present suspicion. And he's just waiting for you to do something. Just waiting for you to do one little thing. Oh, you didn't cook today. I knew, I knew you didn't love to cook. One, you missed one day. And then there he go, there he go. Present suspicion. One little thing, I take you all the way back. And a lot of times in marriages, you you will be doing 10 years, five years, fine. You've been doing three years, great at the church. And one little mistake you make, they'll take you back to as if you were that person that you used to be. Why I always got to go back? Because I made one mistake. I, I failed one time in the last five years. Now you saying, I, I knew you weren't real. I knew you weren't right. I knew knew you didn't change and then you destroy everything that we built when you don't know how to deal with present suspicions it would tear down seven years of, of building it'll tear down 13 great weeks and she'll say you never picked me up and for the last 13 weeks he's always been on time but that present suspicion will tear down everything that he did it'll tear down to the point where you will have amnesia you will really use absolute words you you you'll use words like you never do this for me you never do this. And he'll be saying, wait a minute. I was I just did it for you yesterday. I just did it the day before. And then and then you can, you gotta try to come up with your mind. Let me think what the last time I did it. I know it ain't been that long, but because the present suspicion, it tears down everything because it never fully opened up the door. It never fully opened up his heart. It never fully rested in assurance and really trusted you. And so what happens is it's hard to connect when you don't know how to deal with people who always have a present suspicion, always looking for you to say something. There are people right now, they love the way I teach. They love what God is doing. But they wait for me to say one thing to say, ah, there it is. Ah, I knew it. He couldn't be that good. He couldn't be that loving. He couldn't be that kind. They're looking for one thing because, and this, this becomes comes challenging because I know I'm connected to you. You know you're connected to me, but the present suspicion won't let you push the lock all the way in.
You won't allow the commitment to go all the way in. And so you give a little bit, but you don't want to give your whole heart. You don't give, you don't give your whole soul. You just give enough to function. You give enough to function. Watch this, but you don't give enough to die. You give enough to function, but you're not, you, you, you don't die to all those old mindsets. You're not willing to die to all those old pains. You don't want to die to all those old mindsets that made you suspicious. See? Made you suspicious. And so even though you say, do you trust your wife? You say, yeah, I trust her. Uh, see? Because of that. And so a lot of times, and these are enemies, okay? And so we have to learn how to love them, how to endure, understand their pain. Most of the time, when you are dealing with a person who has present suspicion, it's because there's some old mindsets that they have become friends to. You'd be surprised of the agreements and the alignments that we have in our own mind. That's why you cast down every thought and every imagination. Because this thing will always, there's something you're not willing to let go. There's something willing that you have become friends. And sometimes you'll use a, a protection as a friend to protect you. But even though you're protecting yourself, can't nobody get in and you can't get out. And because you won't let it go. You won't let people have a fresh start in your life. You won't let this relationship have a fresh start in your life. See, a lot of times we're trying to start a relationship, but I already got two strikes against me from the last guy you dated. So I don't get three strikes. I get one. See, because you have a suspicion because of, because what happens is when you see me, you really see him. This is why it can cause so much emotion to come up. You can become, uh, why did you go from one to 10 on the very first thing? Because you was always suspicious about it anyway. So the minute that it looked like it happened, oh, you put the furniture in that room and you went off as if it happened. Okay. That's right. You're not willing to be vulnerable. That's a very key thing. I'm going to talk about the vulnerability of connections. You can never really understand divine connections or be connected the way God wants you if you're not willing to be vulnerable. Anything that's not willing to be vulnerable can't be love. Love is very vulnerable. It, 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 it takes a very vulnerable place to be able to receive love. It means I'm allowing you to be able to hurt me again. I'm opening up myself. So some people say, I'm never going to let nobody hurt me again. What you're really saying is that I'm going to love you from behind the wall. So we can talk from behind the wall. And we can touch the wall and think we're touching one another. But we are agreeing with the relationship of the wall. Okay? And so this becomes an enemy of divine connections. If you're just coming on, please hit that share, share button. Share this on your page. If you're not dealing with past injuries that can become an enemy, of divine connection, you deal with present suspicions. If you're not dealing with present suspicions, a lot of times you deal with future insecurities. Another enemy to divine connection is future insecurities. You are you have no security where you're going. You have you are insecure about your future, so it makes you hold on to everything right now. You won't take that risk. You won't sow into your tomorrow because you have future insecurities. And so what happens is you'll only enjoy the moment for the moment, but I don't think this going to last anywhere. I don't think there's really no future in this relationship. I don't think there's no future in this ministry. There's no future in this bro brotherhood. I have future insecurity. So as long as you are in my face right now, we're great. You're great, but if you don't call me tomorrow, well, I ain't think it's gonna last anyway. Cause I have, I don't have future. I have future insecure. I'm insecure about where this could go. I'm insecure about my tomorrow. I'm insecure about the longevity of anything. And so, a lot of times, you'll find out that wow, why weren't we close? We weren't close because you don't know how to be close on building something. You only know how to enjoy it for what it is. I was watching me, and my wife watching movie. Uh, yesterday with Jimi Hendrix and Jimi Hendrix had future insecurities so he only wanted to enjoy the moment because he never thought that anything was going to last anyway so if I'm with you right now, I'm with you right now but if I meet somebody else later I'm going to be with them later because I don't believe in future securities I'm insecure about what could happen I'm never going to get married I'm never going to have kids I'm, my books are never going to get out I'm not, I used to struggle with that I had future insecurities
insecurities. I was insecure. And so when people would tell me, uh, uh, just just be patient, just give it time, I used to say this, this. Here was my language. This is the language I used to have from my pain. I used to say, I hate time. I used to say that out of my mouth. I can't stand time because time only reveals to me that it's never going to happen. I'm never going to be happy. I'm never going to get this. And I was offended by time. I didn't know that time was my friend. Time is saying I'm going to release it. But because, watch this, because of my future insecurities, I did not. So do it right now. Hurry up and get it out now. We got to get it out now because if it don't happen today, it probably ain't going to happen. And, 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 and I have residues of it right now. But I want to tell you, sometimes this will come out of my mouth. If we don't get it done, it ain't gonna never get done. It's because the devil attacks future securities with future insecurities. And I'd be insecure about is it really gonna ever come to pass? Is this really true? This is why a lot of times when people would prophesy to me, I can feel my anger rising up when I would get prophetic. Because don't tell me something is coming. Because I'm not, I'm really not, I don't have confidence in what will come. I had future insecurities. And this is why people have a lot of times planning is a problem for them because they have future insecurities. So they can't plan. Let's enjoy it right now. Let's enjoy it right now because it's not going to happen. A lot of times you, this happens in the home. I was raised with future insecurities because we never knew when we were going to have something. So my mother would buy ice cream. We eat it all in one day. Because we didn't know when we was going to get ice cream again. And so I remember my mother talked, God, I feel the Holy Ghost helping somebody. Did it. My mother was talking to her best friend and she shared, she said, look, you know, she told her friend, look, my boys, as soon as I get ice cream, they eat it the, the same day, a whole gallon of ice cream. And she said, what's wrong with my kids? And the lady said, because they don't know when they're going to get some. You raised them under a poor environment. My mother didn't have much. We didn't know we was going to get something. So when we got it, we didn't think tomorrow was ever going to come. So if tomorrow came today, then we're going to enjoy it today because tomorrow probably not going to come again for a long time. And so because of that, we ate it. And so what the lady told my mother was every time they eat up all the ice cream, go buy some more. Keep ice cream in the refrigerator. And when they come to the point that they'll know that they don't have to do it all today, because tomorrow it would be there. It'll waste and they won't eat it. And it's exactly what my mother started buying ice cream all the time. Every two or three days, she buys some. And we, me and my brother would go in there and see ice cream in there. And then tomorrow, there's ice cream again. The next day, there's ice cream again. Well, you know what? I don't really want no ice cream. I'll get some later because I know when later come, I'm going to have it. I'm not afraid. See, a lot of, so that's why you can meet a certain woman and because she's ready to connect with you the day you meet her. Y'all can talk about marriage the day y'all meet. Why? Because her, she has future insecurities. So she want to know, do you want to get married? Do you want to get married on the first date? Y'all talking about sex. Y'all talking about babies. Y'all talking about marriage on the very first date. Why? Because she has future insecurities. And because she has future insecurities, she has to make this connection work right now. Because I don't think that you're going to stay around. The more you get to know me, the more I'm thinking you're not going to like me. So I got, I, got to, I got to impress you the first day. A lot of women sleep with men. No one is wrong. They'll sleep with them the first day because of future insecurities. And so you give everything the first day because of future insecurities. This is a very key thing that messes up relationship. And so what happens is y'all really never connect. Y'all just enjoy the pleasure of that day. Purpose is never identified. Identity is never identified. Vision is never identified because I didn't think we was going to make it that long anyway. And so, and so what happens is you'll find this with a lot of men. They say he go through women because he has future insecurities. He go through men because he has future insecurities. Okay, very good, very key thing. You're right, Sister Tia. When you raise up under poverty mentality and poverty environments, it causes you to be a hoarder. It causes you to be all these things because you don't know, and you'll become controlling. You know that poverty can 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 breed a controlling environment. Okay, and so a lot of times in divine connection. Now, what if I'm called to be connected to you, but you're trying to rush everything because you don't have future insecurity? Because you have future insecurities. So because you have future insecurities, you're rushing the process. You're rushing the journey. You're rushing the lessons. You're trying to get everything in one day because you have future insecurities. We have to know how to be connected to people who are powerful 
in our lives, who we are powerful in their lives, but because of future insecurities, okay? And that's not point number six, baby. Uh, well, okay, you can put you can put point number six. I, I'm still on point number five, future insecurities. Okay, so 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 that's very key. Okay, but I'm going to point number six. But you can you can do that, baby. It don't matter. You're good. Okay, so the next point, I'll just put next point, baby. You be led by God as your number. The next point I want to deal with in divine connections. And I, if you just come it on, please hit that share button. We're going to some powerful things that show you some challenges that you may have in any divine connection, whether it's husband, wife, brother, sister, brother to brother, sister to sister, uh, son, a uh, co-worker, whatever the connection may be, there's some things that will, will, that will become challenging, how to overcome those things so that you won't lose, watch this, you won't lose that connection based upon the enemies that we have to learn how to overcome, okay? So the next point I want to deal with, and let me let me let me go quickly over because some people came in late. Point number one was God is sending you people to understand kingdom. So you have to understand the kingdom agenda in a divine connection. That's point number one. Point number two, uh, the kingdom agenda should lead you to walking in the spirit. The, the purpose of the divine connection is to learn to share with one another how to walk in the spirit. That was point number two. Point number three was you have to know how to handle past injuries. Past injuries will create a language that make you feel like this person shouldn't be in your life. And you have to know how to recognize the language of a past injury and don't think that it is an indication that this connection should not be. Good to see you, Brother Teddy. God bless you. Okay. Point number four was dealing with present suspicions. A lot of times people are very suspicious. They really don't trust. This is where their lack of trust. There's a lack of trust. And so a lot of times you have a difficulty in your connection. You know God put y'all together. You know this is a brotherhood. You know this is a sisterhood. You know that God called y'all to be in business together, be in ministry together. But there's a suspicion. I don't know if you're going to bring all your money to the table. There's a suspicion. I don't know if you really have the right motive or the right intent for us to get together. I think you, I think you got another motive while you're doing what you doing. It's, it's, it's a present suspicion. And this sometimes break up the greatest the greatest connections that could ever be. They couldn't get past present suspicions. They couldn't get past past injuries. They couldn't get past the language. Or they couldn't get past, uh, point number five, future insecurity. So they would never invest into where we're going. They didn't know how to sow where we're going. We're sowing where we're going. That's it. You have to have a future security to sow into a place and then wait for the manifestation. That's why a lot of people don't sow because they won't grab it. In the world, it, it, it's trying to produce a, a microwave mentality, a McDonald's blessing. And so because we have future insecurities, we want nuggets right now. We don't want meals. We don't get dinner. We want nuggets because we don't believe that if it, that if we give it time, it probably won't come to pass. Okay? And so these become problems. The next point I want to deal with is in connection is sometimes people have inter -tomor. They have interwars, wars from within. And so what happens is they are dealing with hell on earth. Hell on earth. And when people are dealing with things eternal, that was another one of my problems. I grew up, I always battled internal wars. I was suicidal for probably 30. Thank you for sowing. We're sowing where we're going. I probably was suicidal for maybe 30, maybe 35 years of my life. I was suicidal, taking pills uh, to try to kill myself. I did that twice, uh, standing on the bridge, uh, walking in real dark places with no lights, hoping the car come down and run me over, all those things. Thought about how can I kill myself? I've had guns pointed at my head. Uh, I've called pastors up and says, I'm going to enter today. I got the gun in my head, head right now. I've been through that many, many, many years of my life. Okay, I was dealing with that eternal war. And so because of that, that. People became afraid of me. Uh, people couldn't understand me. Uh, it's like, how can he be so gifted, but he's so confused? Uh, these eternal wars. I, I had a war in dealing with who am I sexually, with my identity, by my stepfather having some struggles in his life, and I loved him so much. Uh, am I gay? And 
never had a gay experience, but I struggled with that mentality. Uh, I never had a father. Am I going to end up gay? Who's? How can I know how to be a man? I deal with the, the manhood. See how transparent I am? That's real. And so there's a lot of wars that go on in between people. And so what happens is they become an introvert. Uh, am I going to be like my dad? My dad was a pimp. Uh, and all those different eternal wars. Will I ever be loved? I, I don't feel if I'm loved or not. And so there's a lot of wars. And see, even though... God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I hear the Lord telling me to say even some more things. It's like it's like there's people who are dealing with things. You're connected to them, but they may not can't be as transparent as I am to say uh, uh, their sexuality. They're questioning sexuality or they're questioning their ability. They're questioning, am I dumb? Am I stupid? Uh, they're questioning, uh, is something wrong with me? Am I crazy? I think I'm crazy. People say I'm crazy. All these eternal wars that go on that makes it difficult sometimes. Uh, yeah, it can be bipolar. It can be very depressed. It can be an uh, introvert. It can be visitations. A lot of times we put labels on people that never was gay. That man was never gay. But there's some feminine spirits that may have visited him. And because we didn't know how to deal with his eternal wars, not having a father in his life, uh, uh, he saw abuse. There are people who have anger issues and they have, they have an eternal war that they're afraid to get mad. Because when they get mad, they really see themselves kill it. They see red and it's eternal war that goes on within them. Sometimes it's multi-personalities. And so a lot of times we are divinely connected to people but who wants to deal with that person? Who wants to deal with that war that you go on that makes them Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? That makes them uh, I don't know what, I don't know who I'm talking to. All these type of things. You'd be surprised of the pastors that is dealing with stuff. They're dealing with stuff. Why do you think pastors, and not to call out names, I, I thank God for him when he was alive, but Pastor Tim, uh, for I forgot what his name was. Uh, Paula White is uh, over his church now. Uh, but he was one of the gro young, youngest growing churches. But he died in a hotel on crack cocaine. Uh, because he dealing with eternal war. Uh, you, you, you look at, and I'm just going through some things. You looking back over... Uh, uh, Marvin Gaye's life, and you found his father was a preacher, but 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 his father was preacher by day, but then his, he go in his dad's room at night, and his dad got on his wife's clothes. Okay, eternal wars. Why are you dressing like a woman, dad? What's going on? Uh, 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 Dennis Rodman was dealing with eternal eternal wars, even though he's a great basketball player. You 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 you're dressing crazy. You want to be a woman? Come to find out, his father uh, was, was 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 a, a person that dressed up like a woman. All these eternal wars. That goes on that we don't understand. A uh, child could have been molested, and because she was molested, she deals with some. E so Zachary Tims, thank you. She deals with some eternal wars that go on. Okay, all kind of stuff. Uh, Richard Pryor was raised up in a prostitute house, and so so he saw a lot of things. Eternal war. James Brown, all these great people, but but his mother denied him, and his father dropped him off at a whole house and raised him under. So he has an eternal war. So he's singing all kind of stuff, but stuff is going on, and so most times. When people have these kind of wars, they're hard to deal with. They're hard to read. Uh, you can't figure them out. They're hard to connect. You don't know. I have a lot of great friends who are musicians, but because they was adopted, they have eternal wars. Why didn't my mother raise me? Why didn't my mother leave me? And so because of that, they, they're never committed. You never know if they're going to show up for rehearsal. You don't know if they're going to come. Now, when, when they when they own the scene, they are fantastic but but you never know how to you never know how to measure them because these eternal wars and so you want to connect to them I, I i was longing for people to connect with me but but can you handle what i'm about to show you can you handle what i'm dealing with mentally that, that i'm allowing voices to talk to me and i'm hearing all these voices all these different things okay and so and so and so this is why and people will tell me jesus you have a lot of patience i have a lot of patience because i was that child. I was that child. One of my favorite movies is Ant the, the, the story of Antoine Fisher. And he had an anger problem. He was always in fights. But nobody asked him, why are you in fights? Well, he was thrown from one home to another home. And the lady would call him the N-word. And, and they would take him. The lady who was supposed to be helping him, putting him in a safe environment, would take the kids down in the basement and beat the kids. Beat them, beat them, beat them, beat them. Uh, put fire in their face. Boy, I'll burn you up. I'll burn you up, you N-word. And all these things. So he had wars. And then she would leave him with a babysitter. And the woman molested him. He molested by a woman. Be surprised at the men who've been touched by a woman or touched by a 
my family member. And so I understand that when I woke up and I know that something happened to me, but I don't know what happened. And there's a war. Is, is something wrong with me? Because I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. And so these eternal wars that go on, whether it's adoption, whether you've been molested, whether you've been raped, uh, whether you, you, you see some things in your home that create these wars, all these type of, even your gift can call a war. When you can't find your place that you think different, you look different, you sound different, you dress different. A lot of our kids are having eternal war. So they don't know what to wear. So one day they come with crazy clothes on and you say, take that stuff off, boy. What's wrong with you? There's some war on the movie Empire. Everybody love it. But, but, the, but the boy who was gifted, he has some war. He has some eternal war. Even as a child, all the kids playing, he show up in his mama's shoes. He's five and six years old, but something is going on. Oh, only and his father didn't know what to do with it. See, his father, so his father didn't connect to it. So he never felt the connection of his father because of these wars from within. It happens to the greatest, uh, whether it's a father issue. Most men deal with the war of their father issue. My father never named me. My father never affirmed me. So these create war. And so they don't connect. And this will, this will, make, this will make you very wild. You will sleep around. Uh, you'll never be connected. You'll never finish high school or college. Or you'll never stay in a certain sport, you're always quitting, you're starting, you're quitting, you're starting, you're quitting, because the war won't let you be committed. The, the war tells you, well, it's just a matter of time, they're going to see what you're dealing with, and nobody wants to put up with you. And all these things go on. Am I making sense to you? Hope it's making sense to you. And this happened, I don't care if you're a bishop, I don't care if you're an apostle, I don't care if you're a prophet. And most people are not transparent like me. They don't want to tell their war because they're afraid you're going to see them differently. Like, like, oh, if I tell you what I'm dealing with, what, do you still see me as a man of God? Do you question my manhood because I said that every man fights with, is he a man? Whether he tell you or not. Every woman fights with it. You have to come to a conclusion that that's who I am and I'm going to be there. But the visitation comes because the devil knocks on everybody's door. It it just, it just all depends on what door you answer. There are certain doors you didn't answer, so that was never a problem for you. But it's going to come. It's, whether it's lying, it's because sin is sin. And so the real reality of it, but, but, but sometimes the war makes it difficult for you to connect to, or even believe in connection. Or it becomes difficult for people to want to connect to you once they know things about you. Once A lot of people don't know un unconditional love. They say they do until they know your condition. Until they, until you tell them what you're battling with, okay? But I, I saw my mother's battle. I saw my mother take all these pills. I saw my mother say things like, I, I don't think I'll ever get a man in my life that really loves me. For, she struggled with, was she pretty enough? My mother struggled with, was, was she a good mother? A lot of mothers have eternal wars within themselves. They may never tell you, but they really wondered, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong as a parent? And it fights them, it fights them, it fights them. It is real talk, okay? So it needs to turn around. And so what happens is you'll be, you be experiencing hell on earth. You ain't got to go to hell. You're already living it. Eternally, you, you're living it. You're living it, okay? You're living it, okay? Real talk. And so you got to be able, in that connection, and we need people that, that is learning like what I'm teaching. It says, look here. I have some eternal worlds too because there's a lot of men who want to do right, but are you going to love them out of their war? Are you going to help fight for them? See, it's easy to say, I ain't dealing with that. Well, what, what, why don't you help join in? See, because it really, because you don't love me. Because love will show the value even in trash. One man's trash is another man's treasure. You got love will show you the original because when God created him, he didn't create him like that. He didn't create you like that. So why can't people see you from how God saw you? See, until you see people the way God saw you, you won't make the connection because you won't connect because you don't have a godly vision of why you need to connect and what they bring to you. And I feel you. She said, I can't stop crying. I know. I understand it because I was longing for somebody to say, hey, he's gifted, but he got a war. He got a war. He got a war. He's a little boy, but he's fighting. He's fighting. He's a man, but he's fighting for it because his environment is fighting against him. What if you're trying to be something that your environment fights against you? 
This is why you have to know who your children is, parent, because you can help create an environment that fights against your children. They try to become who God wants them to become, but you help create the war by creating the environment that fuels the war. See, that's why you can't call them names. He's a sissy. Don't call him a sissy. You stupid. You dumb. She's fighting. Is she, in, is she intellectual? Is she, do, can I, do I have enough to get through school? Is something wrong with me? She's already fighting that from within. And here you come alone and call her dumb and stupid. It don't help. See, you know, it doesn't help. You, you, and what happens is, and then you say, my kids don't trust me. My kids don't connect to me. Why shouldn't they connect to you? You hurt them at a place in their growth. So now they don't feel safe to grow with you because you created an environment. So they have to protect themselves by pulling away. Okay? Very key. Okay? Very key. Very key. Very key. Okay. So internal turmoil, wars from within. Brother, and so what happens is you'll find preachers. A lot of preachers won't tell you what I just told you. But what happens is they got a mission on the side. That's because they got some wars. They don't feel complete. They don't feel they satisfied, so they get somebody else that 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 tells them that they're okay. Because the wife don't make them feel okay. It's wrong. Cheating is wrong. But when you don't deal with your war, you'll find something to, you'll find a coping mechanism. You'll find an antidote. You'll find an alcoholic. So you're drinking something. So you're, you're a preacher, but you drink yourself. Real talk. You'll find out that most gifted children were raised under a parent that had addiction somewhere. Those wars. Okay? Identity can be a war. See? Identity. Who am I as a child? What if I don't play basketball? I don't play football? I don't seem to be that attractive. So I struggle within that I'm, I'm, I'm that's what Leah had. Leah had a complex. She had, she had an image complex. The Bible says that she was caca. She wasn't attractive. The Bible says Rachel was beautiful. But Leah wasn't beautiful. Leah was so messed up in the people's eyes that they had to trick her to get a husband. We're going to put you in a room. He thinks it's your sister. It's not just. Do you know how she felt? Knowing she was in that room dressed up. Knowing Jacob was in love with her sister. And she opened herself up because she felt so rejected. Nobody ever going to love me. Then my dad has to come to me and say, we're going to trick you into having a husband. And go ahead and have sex with him. Lay with him. He's going to be your husband. And that's the only way you're going to get a man. She struggled with that. The Bible says she was hated. She was hated because how she looked. That's a war. She didn't feel like she was nothing. So she used Jacob as a way to deal with her pain. That's why her first three babies, and there really was a cry for his love. She said, I'm going to name this first one, Simeon. For you have, watch this, for you have seen my afflictions. You name it a child after your pain. You know, women having babies because they have a war that nobody's ever going to love me. So if I sleep with him, maybe he'll love me. If I have his kids, maybe he'll love me. And we saying it's not wisdom, but she's too broken to have wisdom. She having war. You can't give, you got to give wisdom to come out the war. You got to give wisdom to come out the war. That's why we need connection to show you. You don't have to do that, baby girl. You're beautiful. We don't get affirmation. The average child, this is a scientific fact. The average child hears the word no 10,000 times more than they hear the word yes. The word no. Can I get some? No. Can I go outside? No. Can I go out? No. Can I watch that? No. See? And so we create wars within because they never feel affirmed, never feel appreciated, never feel adored. This creates eternal worlds, whether it's insecurity about yourself. See what I'm saying? Why mama don't like me? You, you can have wars within family because one, one daughter got long hair, other daughter hair fall out. So, and mama always more concerned about the one who hair is, who is, is growing. Or a one is light skinned, one is dark skinned. So the, back in the day, light skinned child was favored. Or by two different daddies. If you watch Boys in the Hood, you know what it's really about? You know why Ice Cube, Ice Cube Park in the movie? 
the mother that spent time with him, but the uh, the other guy, I forgot his name, uh, Morris Chestnut, she liked him, he played football, but by two different daddies. She despised Ice Cube father. So he got into crime because he was dealing with a war for his mother's love. See? And so there's, so a lot of times there are dysfunctional families because of the war for mama's love. Who wins mama's heart? Got nine kids. Who gonna win the heart of mama? Then you create wars. It can go on and on from one level to another level. One child, one child is more athletic than the other, so you always at their games. The other child draw, and you can't even buy no. You don't even buy uh, paper and, and, and crayons from the color. But the football guy, you got him equipment. You got him spikes. You got him helmets. Cause that's your boy. You create a war. Cain and Abel created a war. Cain and Abel and Abel because they felt like God received this offering. See, real talk. Okay. Uh, point number seven. I'm going to take a little time today. Point number seven, okay? And so we ask God, and so I'm praying, God, give us a strength to understand these combined connections. And when people are going through wars in their life, let us not pull back in the most time that they need us. In the most time that they need us. God, give us strength and give us a sensitivity to see that this is not the time to leave them. This is not the time to judge them. This is not the time to bring up what they're going through. This is the kind to love them and to hug them and to encourage them and to begin to, and to prophesy into them and download who you showed us who they are in the name of Jesus. You're absolutely right. The car system went through the same thing. You know, I didn't want to speak a lot about it because I don't like the negativity that comes down. But that movie, The Clark Sisters, reveals so much of dysfunction. I felt bad for Twinkie. I felt bad for Denise. I felt bad for these people. As much as they great and they sing it and all we know, there were some eternal wars that were going on within the home. And the Clark sisters are not the only one. They're not the only one. You look at any major family, whether it's the Whiters, whether it's Fred Hammond, it's all because the enemy don't want greatness to ever be revealed. He never, never wants you to walk into wholeness. He wants you to be broken all your life and, and make you feel like you're by yourself and you're going to have to deal with that. And so there's a lot of ways that people are trying to cope with their war. They're trying to get through this battle of their mind. And I'm glad it cost us to release the movie, but it showed how religion and church create wars. You have to deal with that, that, uh, that, that, that mama, I'm your oldest daughter as a Clark, and you not going to let me in because I have old pants? You would deny your daughter for religion? That's real. That's real. You create wars. And people, people gravitate to all kind of things. Some may gravitate to alcohol. Some may gravitate to pride. Some may gravitate to, to weed. Some may gravitate to women. Some may gravitate to power and control. But they gravitate to different things because there's no way to help them with this war from within. And you're trying to do all you can. You're trying to be a wife. You're trying to be a husband. But there's a war within you that don't nobody know. You cry silently. The, you know, my cousin got a, he's writing a book and I was going to write a book on the same subject. Uh, uh, the, uh, a crying, the, cry, the, cr the silent cry of a man. Men cry silently. Men cry silently. A lot of times, a, a men when he cry, when a man cries verbally, or or you feel or you see the tears, you better believe he's been crying for a while. He cries silently because of the war from within, because he's not embraced as a man. See, or a woman, she cries. Who's gonna feel her? Who's gonna understand her? The war. Mothers, mothers go through this eternal world trying to raise these kids by myself. I ain't have them by myself. It creates a war. It creates a war. When you cheat on a woman, you create a war. Infidelity. Am I not enough? I did everything possible for this marriage. And you mean tell me you still went outside of it? It creates a war. Real talk. Real talk. And so what happens is now, now that beautiful woman who's been designed to be a wife, she can't give her new husband everything he should have. She can't connect. She's having a problem with connection because the war may show up. If the, if the war shows up in this marriage, I'm going to forsake it like I did the last one. Because I can't fight you and fight from within. See, I can't, I can't win two fights. I can't fight the guy in the ring and then fight the guy at my corner. I can't be boxing the guy in the ring and then go to my corner and my wife hit me upside the head. So we, so we, so we pull away. 
Many people are still married, but you've been divorced. You've been pulled away from the marriage because papers don't marry you. Papers don't divorce you. Your heart, the ripping of the heart. See, God gave me a word yesterday. He told me, he says, the reason why I hate divorce is because, because the love from the heart rips the soul. God is a lover of our soul. He comes to save our soul. He said, I hate divorce because of what it does to the heart and the soul of the ind individual. The most two most powerful things about anybody is your heart and your soul. And divorce rips them both. That's why I hate it. See? It ain't about the paper. Okay? Very key. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ricky. See, I'm helping you. And so you got to deal with that. And you got to tell people I'm fighting. My wife know about my wars. I talk about them. There's wars that I used to have I don't have anymore. I really know who I am now in God. But I used to have that war. Okay? I really understand that, that, that I am lovable. I don't have that war anymore. I used to be so insecure. Oh, my God, I was so insecure. See? All type of things. And so watch this. Point number seven. Uh... I put the sore of discord looks for vulnerability. When, when you've been wounded, like I've been talking about, and I'll end on this point, you look for the vulnerability of others. A lot of times you are divinely connected to people, but the problem is their wounds are so deep. They looking for something in you that is vulnerable to complement their pain. In other words, they never see you for the positive reason. They looking for something that is, they looking for the agreement of an unhealthy relationship. And a lot of times when you're trying to connect to somebody and you're trying to move forward, they look for your vulnerability in your weakness. They look for the vulnerability in your weakness. And so what happens is they'll connect to you based upon the vulnerability of your weakness. And so now, even though y'all connected, it's not a healthy connection because he looks for the vulnerability. Thank you for sowing. We're sowing where we're going. So they look for the vulnerability of it, okay? They look for the weak points to expose. See? They look for the weak points to expose. So here you're supposed to be connected to this person for positive reasons, but they always find something wrong with you to connect to that. They may say stuff like, me and you are like, see, because we never had a father in our life, and we probably will never be loved the way we need to be loved. You don't need to hear that. So they look for the vulnerability, because what happens is the enemy uses pains and injuries and past as a way to build an army. Like people would say, uh, what's it say? Birds of a feather flock together. Misery loves company. And so a lot of times you're connected for a positive reason. But because their pain located your pain, it caused you, watch this, to be in agreement, to be in a stuck place. To be in a stuck place. I remember in my church hurt, I got around more people, right? That's right, baby. An emotional safety net. And so I got around more people that, that used my, my weakness as a vulnerability to connect with them. See, so, all we, so we all messed up together. And nobody has a solution for no one else because, and so this, and this becomes a hard thing. When you try to do better, they use what they know against you to keep you stuck. Well, you think you better? You think you better than us? Well, you, you was there too. You ain't always had it together. So now they make you, they put a guilt trip on you for trying to advance your life. Good to see you, Dorlette. God bless you. Great friend back in Ohio. And so and so so what happens is they use your vulnerability. That's why a lot of times people won't connect to you and they'll never tell you about their life. And so there's some secrets they have, which means it limits how far y'all can really be connected because they don't want you to use their vulnerability against them. See? That's why a lot of people won't, won't tell their true testimony. See, Apostle Jenkins, he's he very transparent, but I ain't going to say that because if I say that, people will hold that against you. I, but guess what? They try to hold it against me. I've had many people tell me, you say too much. Why you got to tell it all? Because there's people who still are where I was, and they got to know how to get out. And I can't make them think that you need a friend 
that keeps you stuck. The only way you can have a friend that all y'all do is cry together about how y'all both was molested or how y'all both was had infidelity in your marriage, how both of y'all went through cheating husbands, but you never become whole. You never move into your full connection. You never really connect. You never become healed. You never move in your full destiny, but because you find vulnerable people that you can use their weakness against them to gather you an army. You build a family family of wounded people and then you protect the wounds not get healed but at least we together in our wounds Woo! okay oh okay very key and so you have and guess what you have to know how to handle that because it always say this people don't let nobody keep you where they met you if you didn't get nothing else I said today, don't let nobody keep you where they met you. People will keep you where they met you. We have a divine connection, but you're not going to keep me when you met me. When you met me, I didn't know that. I didn't know this. I, I was messed up here. I was messed up in, in that. But God is constantly healing me. God is constantly delivering me. You're not going to use where I was to get where I am. See? And so a lot of people, I can't move into a greater connection because you want to keep me where you met me. You want to keep me what you want to keep me in my old testimony when I overcome by the word by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. I overcome. That's right. Codependent versus covenant. That's right. And so there's a there, there, you become an enabler. And people are looking for people. There are people who are looking. And listen, when you first get hurt by church, you be looking for other people. So, that for, so if you say, man, he's telling you these churches ain't right. And somebody say, yeah, I tell you, they ain't right. They ain't right. And so all y'all get together and do, all y'all talk about is how bad churches is. Apostles ain't right. People taking the money. People ain't trustworthy. And you ain't grown. You don't study no more. You don't fast no more. But you found somebody vulnerable that was church hurt like you and all y'all do is talk about church hurt or you find somebody that got hurt like you and all y'all talk about as how many is is no good you can't trust a man all men are dogs and so you never move into a healthy connection because you find somebody vulnerable to recruit to, to become cheerleaders of your pain they become cheerleaders of your past they become cheerleaders of your injuries and you build a click and they're looking to recruit more hurt people. See? Now, it's a real reality. I need to connect to you, but not for you to keep me stuck. You know? What's the difference between a tree that's planted and, and a tree that's stuck? The difference between a stuck tree and a planted tree is the fruit that it bears. If you're not bearing any fruit, you're not planted, you're stuck. How long are you going to stay in the place and there's no fruit from what you're getting? There's no fruit from the relationship. See? So you know what you create? You create spiritual hospitals that nobody ever get healed. And all we do is complain about what's not functioning. But never move towards, watch this, total wholeness. All right? And so, and they probe, they look for it. Have you been through something? You say, yeah, I've been through something my daddy went in my life. I knew it. I can tell. There they go. Ain't that something? How, how these dads, these no good, these deadbeat dads, there they go. And you eat it up for hours and hours and hours. You eat it up for hours. And, you wouldn't pray for hours and hours, but you show and talk about your problems for hours and hours. And, and you become addicted to that level of conversation. And that was not the purpose of the connection. Okay. They will find valid points that they can use against you to keep you stuck. There are some people who don't want to move. That you are divinely connected to them to go to another level, but they don't want to move. So what they do, they say things to you that make you agree with them or causes you to agree with them so that you will not advance. They bring up things your flesh wants to hear. To justify why you won't move, why you won't do better, why you won't come against laziness, why you won't come against insecurities. They look for valid points and they sound like they just telling the truth. A lot of times these connections, these entities of connections, it sounds like they just, they just keep it in real. They keep it in real while they're keeping you stuck. They keep it in real while they're keeping you stuck. 
Girl, people don't know how hard it is trying to raise kids out by yourself. You're right. You're right. It is hard. But how long are you going to keep saying that? When are you going to start learning how to do it better? When are you going to move towards the God has more for you. God has better for you. The purpose of my connection is to not make you feel good in being average. The purpose of my connection is not for me to make you feel good in being a complainer. The purpose of my connection is not for me to make you feel good that you're not alone in your misery. I should tell you that misery is a temporary spot, but it's not a permanent uh, resident. You don't live there. Good to see you, Pastor Trek. God bless you, man. Love you so much. And so you have to know how to deal with these connections. I'm coming out of this. You're not going to be my friend, my misery friend. Okay? And we're going to work together. We're going to work together. Because if you've been there, you identify me. Where are we going with this? We're going to identify goals and objectives. For we can use this for the right reason. There are people that the enemy will use to stay with you as long as you never get to the place you've been called to be. Did you hear what I just said? The devil will use certain people that you are divinely connected to to keep you stuck in certain places. And you got to say, this was not the purpose why God put us together. You got to say that. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll stop there. Tomorrow I'm going to pick up if the Lord said the same. I'm going to deal with how to be in a relationship with people who carry negative emotions. I'm going to do a whole teaching on negative frequencies and how to overcome negative frequencies, okay? Negative emotions, because there's people that you are connected to. It could be your son, your daughter, your wife, your husband. They just so negative. It is hard for your relationship. You say, I need y'all to push me in the spirit. My sister, the one who said, I need y'all to push me in the spirit. I want to come out. Lift your hands up. If you're able to lift your hands up. And I want you to say to God what you just said to us. Father, I want you to push me into the spirit. I'm yielding. Just lift your hands up. Total to God. See what you're asking for us. God will give it to you right now. God is, God is waiting on you to do it. I declare it in the name of Jesus for that sister who wants to come out. Who wants to come out. Of whatever she's struggling with. God you give her the strength. You give her the pathway. You make it clear for her. God connect her to the people. That was supposed to be her guide post. That's supposed to be her inspiration. Her motivation. God wake up the connection. In the name of Jesus. Put the people in the right places. Move out the places that are causing hindrance. Move out the roadblocks. In the name of Jesus. So that she can walk into it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We declare victory over her life. You have died to set her free. In the name of Jesus. She's crying out. She's crying out, God. She's crying out. We assign angels to her mind, north, east, south, and west. We assign angels to her house, to her mentality. We assign people that's been divinely connected to know how to help her detox so that she can move out. She won't carry any poison to the next place. That she can see the pathway. Lord, let the word of God become a lamp to her feet and a light to her pathway so she can know that her steps have been ordered by the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for deliverance today. For many people want to come out of this war. They want to come out of this battle. They want to come out of this confusion. They want to come out. Deliver them in the name of Jesus. Show them the deliverance have been made by the yielding to them, Lord. Help them see what they need to give up, what they need to let go, what they need, the areas of trust they need to trust you in. You have never left us to ourselves. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for the level of deliverance today. We thank you, Lord. These divine connections. God, we bless you for it. 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 It is done in Jesus' name. It is done in Jesus' name. If you have not sold today, we believe that you should sow into the spirit. We should sow it wherever there's a word is, you sow where the word is. And in whatever that case may be, we don't put a certain amount on it. If you're able to give and God has laid on your heart to give, so whether it's a dime, whether it's a dollar, whether it's five dollars, it doesn't matter. Whatever God lays on your heart, but sow into that as an act of faith that I believe I'm going where this word is. I want to walk this word out and I'm giving the investment. I'm assigning my money to 
to a place to work for me. Work where this word is. Wherever the word is, you need to sign your seed to that word. And so if God has laid on your heart, the, the PayPal is there, the cash app is there, go ahead and do that out of obedience and God will do what he promised to do, okay? And so when, and, and many times you need to start giving because it's going to create the currency for you to be able, for God to sow you many things in your life. A lot of times you sow where you're going. You sow where you're going. You give God what is less and he'll give you more. Always. All we have is two fish and five loaves of bread. I'm going to put it in the hands of God and I have an expectation that God will bless it and he will break it. And in the breaking, he's breaking the limitations. And so right now you may be in a need for something. You may be in need of something financially, physically because of what's going on with Corona. You're sowing into where you're going. I'm going into a free place. I'm going into a place that multiplies and I'm showing my investment. This is where I'm going. So I thank God for that. If that's you, go ahead and do that. We take out the time to do that. We love you. We God bless you for all that you're doing. Okay, and my wife is, you putting up the cash out? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay, and my wife will be putting up the cash out and the PayPal and however you do that, whatever God lays on your heart. And whatever God lays on your heart to give, you do that. Do not be caught up in how much it is. It is that you created a flow from your belief of God. You give God what you have as God has purpose in your heart. God tells you what to give, not man. Okay? And so we thank you for that. And if you have nothing to give, I'm telling you, you have everything to give. You may give a share button. You may give a thank you. You may give a hallelujah. You may give a prayer. You can pray. You can sow prayers. You can sow many things. Don't think it's just financially. You can sow your support by inviting people. You can sow your ears about attention. I'm listening. I'm writing down. I'm taking notes. Whatever God put on your heart to give, you do that and watch God bless you. Good to see you, Pastor Vaughn. Love you so much. Thank you, man of God. For your presence being in, in, in my life. So we thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Part six. Part six. How to understand and transform enemies of divine connections. Whenever you are connected to a ministry, to a man, to a woman, to a marriage, there are enemies' mindsets that come against it. We're going to show you how to overcome those mindsets so that you don't lose the person. I need you. You need me. We cannot let the enemies that come against connection, to, we cannot never let the issue become an issue between me and you. We can never let the issues become an issue between me and you. I love you. God bless you. Walk in God's favor. Whatever you have given today has been sealed, has been blessed by God. Have an expectation of what God is doing. I love you and we'll see you tomorrow. Part, uh, what was the day? Part five? Part six tomorrow on how to understand and transform the enemies of divine connections. I love you. Walk in God's favor.